is this amateur hour? I'm blacker than the ace of spades and more militant than you and your whole damn army put together. Why you out there chanting that rally, browbeating politicians? I'm taking out any money from the sucker on the humble that gets in my way. So I'll tell you what. When your so-called revolution starts, you call me, and I'll be right down front showing you how it's done. But until then, you need to shut the fuck up when grown folks is talking. Now can you dig it? Ladies, gentlemen, and scholars, the world's first quantum and empowered podcast live from the Daddy Juice Energy Studio in the repeated curtain district. Your star players, Gemini Jackson and Arthur Dude. <laughs> welcome, welcome, ladies, gentlemen, of course, you scholars. I'm your fearless and greasy host, Gemini Jackson, somewhere in the quantum and with one quarter of four dudes in a booth, Arthur Dude. Howdy, ninjas. And before we start the show, a word from our sponsor. Will you tell us, financial advisors? When you gotta move some weight? Why well, wait? Will you help you diversify holdings? Flat rate? Always great. Will you get it done? Call Julio Tejas today. Or regret it tomorrow. Julio Tejas. Did a double X quantum and no, 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 no. Not all right. Not all right. Do you guys want to know some Godzilla facts? Hey, yeah, dude, him. tell me. Do you know why? Do you why? know why? Why are no, you all of a sudden was, coming at me, Gemini a, Jackson, with some Godzilla facts? Because it was Godzilla's 66th birthday, Ooh. November 3rd. Uh, the very first movie came out November 3rd, 1954. That's not really in, his birthday, in then, Japan. he was, like, at least more than zero days old. I'll just accept I, that he's 66. <laughs> I want to hear okay. these fun facts. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, going down yeah. a rabbit hole. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Fact number one, his original name, Gojira, Ooh. was rumored to be the nickname of a tough guy at Toho Studios. Ooh. So according to Ishiro Honda, who directed the first Godzilla film, there was this big, and I mean huge, fellow working in Toho's publicity department. And other employees would say that this guy is as big as a gorilla. And then no, he's almost as big as a Kujira, which is a Japanese word for whale. I and mean, if you put gorilla and Kujira together, you get Gojira. It's a fun story, but in 1998, Honda's widow dismissed uh, this account, telling the BBC, the backstage boys at Toho love to joke around with tall stories, but I don't believe that one. Who are you um, going to believe, though? Him or the wife? The guy. Uh, yeah. if she, was, she was pretty involved. She would read all of the scripts. She made uh, him. She made Godzilla. Man, she's trying to get into the limelight, dog. Yeah, they. Um, yeah, she made she, Godzilla. Yeah. Honda would always give her the scripts to read to make sure that the female characters were believable in it. So that's yeah, that something that, that, he, that's nice. that he did. Yeah. That is nice. um, she was an actress, actually. Was she uh, Godzilla? Uh, she mm-hmm. was not. Who's Godzilla? Um, give me that factoid. Hmm. Godzilla was Haruo Godzilla. Nakajima. There's been a few people, because the suit is actually really big. Who played him best? Um, yeah, uh, who played him the best? Who had who's the most, your favorite like, feeling, you know? Sean Connery, obviously. But who's your favorite Godzilla? <laughs> I like the first one. Oh, you're a Nakamura Naka, Naka fan, Jima. huh? I got a question about the first one. Naka, Nakajima. How was yeah. it connected Nakajima. to the director? Did they the know what? each other before the movie, or was he just an um, actor that tried they, out for the part? Oh, the actor, they okay. They did. They did actually know each other, I believe. He had been involved in a a movie prior that they had done. I think a film kind of documentary style about the Pearl Harbor bombing. Ooh. Yeah, there was a scene in I there. I want to watch where, that one. <laughs> there was a scene in there where there had to be a stunt pilot fly a plane that was on fire and going down, and Nakajima, he was the man. one who was in it. Yeah, Nakajima. Nakajima was like, "I'll do that." So they had him do it. There was also another actor that was in the suit, but he was a little bit older. And the one scene that he was doing, he fell Ooh. and like really hurt himself. Ooh, and he got um, fired. That's gonna be my next fact. That suit, the very first suit in the movie, was two hundred pounds. Dip. Whoa, um, that's a lot. That's heavy. Uh, six and a half feet tall. Yeah, Monkeys, uh, that's but, like oh, 120 pounds more than I think it should be. It was like vinyl and plastic. God but damn, like, yeah, and this is back in the day too, man. Materials like, were just like not more good. robust. Permeated, permeated with cement. Perfect. Why? Perfect <laughs> yeah. to bond it together. <laughs> so that it would like. Um, so that it would last. Oh, yeah. But yeah that, that, man. It was pretty heavy, and by the end of shooting, Nakajima had lost 20 pounds. Duh. Uh, from sweating just from, it out, huh? just from playing it yeah he could only last three minutes at a time that's what she said um 
<laughs> in the suit because he would either pass out from the weight or they would use kerosene to light all the models on fire like all the buildings so he would like be passing so out like legit all the fumes out. would just be like and he would just so they'd be filming and then godzilla would just like fall over because <laughs> he had carbon monoxide poisoning <laughs> yeah. god damn yeah. dude this is wild <laughs> Oh, no, 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 not keep going to sleep. Don't go to sleep. No, 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 no. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. This the is scenes, good stuff. The scenes that were <laughs> most dangerous stuff. is when he's in the water. Because if, yeah, if he fell asleep if he in the water. out in the water, he can drown. <laughs> but that's like half the time. Oh, wow. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Godzilla is always in the fucking water. Yeah, dude. That's what he, he yeah. loves the water, man. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Is he? He's a lizard, right? I don't know what he is, uh, man. He's he, radiation. He was designed to be a monster. So... They wanted to differentiate him from the other monster movies at the time. They wanted um, to create an all new monster. So the other monsters at the time, Which they especially did. well, especially in the U.S., it was giant spiders or giant literal giant birds, praying mantises. There was the oh, what was the one that came right before it? Uh, Reptilicus or or no, the, the monster from Twenty Thousand Fathoms. I think that's what it was. Actually, Ray Harryhausen was the one who did a monster from 20,000 Fathoms. Uh And he was kind of pissed off because he thought that Godzilla was a ripoff of his movie. It wasn't, but but a lot of it is very similar. They added, I don't know if you have looked at the early Godzillas, um, but they usually have little ears. Uh Um, Little ears? (laughs) Yeah, they have little ears to make it kind of mammalian, I guess. I don't know. And so they try to get it away from being just like a, a lizard or just like a but tyrannosaurus. But like the creature from the Black yeah, so Lagoon. It was, it was like a monster. Yeah. Anyway, fact number two. Godzilla was originally going to be a giant mutated octopus. So it's part of movie lore by now, but the original idea for Godzilla was that he would look something like a giant octopus. Like a kraken? Um, No, actually, just a giant octopus. Ultimately, producer Tomoyuki Tanaka decided to go with a more dinosaur-like design instead. Good job. And Yeah, that was it was one of the ideas of of someone who wanted it to be like that. And the other guy was like, "Uh, I think we should go with the Godzilla-ish. So they actually got their design. They looked at, I think there was some like Life Magazine dinosaur things out at that time. I used to read them shits. Yeah, they kind of chose one that was... Um, that shit. An, an iguanodon, actually. Yeah, exactly. I'm on that shit. Iguanodon. Zoo books. Zoo books. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. I got it from Muzzy. Zoo books. Fact number three is Godzilla <laughs> went head to head with Charles Barkley. In 1992, Godzilla and NBA star Charles Barkley faced off in a Nike ad. The commercial, which was filmed over the course of eight days, was also adapted into a comic book. That's pretty hot shit. Um, That's actually pretty hot shit. <clears throat> Are you aware of this yeah. comic book, Burrito Burrito Bandito? I didn't know about this comic book. Um, He's but save I know PDF. that there are a lot of Godzilla comics. I have some of the more recent ones that came out in the last few years. I don't want three. Pretty good. I don't want. Three. I don't want the one with Charles Barkley now. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have any hentai um, Godzilla? Yes, of course. I'm sure there Rule 34, is. Man. Hey, so, I'm sure so there is. about Godzilla, why is he in the water if he's like a bipedal dinosaur? Man, why can't he just go for a swim, oh, dude? Yeah, why he, 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 likes, he like that, likes it. He just he wants to be there. I get it. Okay, I get it. Hey. He just wants to be there, man. He just wants to be there. It's like a crocodile. <laughs> just hangs out in the water just because. Yeah. Where's he bet, go, though? I bet Godzilla wants to be in the S-Club with Gemini Jackson, though. Exactly. I bet Godzilla would be up, fucking man. on some blue whales, right? <laughs> oh, shit. You think he, like, rides some bitches? <laughs> Does Godzilla ride blue whales? <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm sure. I mean, he's got to have yeah, some Yeah, of course. Fun. All right, right. fact number four. Scientists say that Godzilla could never actually exist. That's a buzzkill. Uh, Paleontologist Mike P. Taylor, loser, claims that the (laughs) limb cartilage in a Godzilla-sized animal would be crushed like overripe watermelons by its own body weight. What if it had like an exoskeleton like that beetle, though? With the interlocking oh, yeah. membrane. He's made out of radiation, man. He's he made makes a out of water. radiation. Fuck. What if he's just like empty inside? He's just looking for love, man, or something. Exactly. And it's all the wrong places. <laughs> you know, right. maybe go to Tokyo. You know, maybe try like Thailand. Why not? Why not? Or maybe like fucking California. I don't know. Nah, not California at all. Why? Ooh. California is where they, they got the Hollywood. Oh, wait, wait. oh yeah, Walker not California. Flame but... star. Which yeah, is they track go. number five. Oh, me, 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 me. <laughs> Australia. Forced uh, transition. Forced transition. Yeah. Godzilla's got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, his induction came in 2004 to commemorate his 50th birthday. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah nice. Birthday. And bonus fact: I know you guys have asked me this before about his um, dong, his dick? roar. Oh no! no. Oh, his roar. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, it sounded. Yeah. No, no, no. What his? That's like the psychic like. thing we asked. I've never <clears> asked <throat> you about his roar. I, yeah, I think we I asked him. And I, well, no, nobody has. Yeah, we definitely yeah, asked you, you about it. Definitely asked me. That was included, but we did a reenactment where this girl went out on a date with Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah, played yeah. Godzilla, and so yeah. he had to roar in response. Okay. Usually, going on the state. So usually in the comic books, it's spelled out Screonk, which is like S K A R E E O N K. You're right. Yeah. I remember <clears throat> Screonk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so what um, about Screonk? So, so the guy who did all the music for it, Akira Ifukube. Trent Reznor. He wanted to design something a little bit different than the roars that were used for like King Kong and, and all the other monsters, which was usually like a mixture Deep. of like a lion and birds and other yeah. animals just kind of like, you know, mixed together. So he rubbed a leather glove that had been soaked in pine tar across a contrabass and then applied an echo effect to it. And mm. that was the original source of the roar for yeah. oh, that's pretty cool. You can really right? hear the uh, the leather scraping on the or the pine tar. I yeah. can hear definitely hear the pine tar. You can hear pine tar? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's play that again. <laughs> let's play that one more time, please. Pine tar all the way. Pine tar? Yeah. Oh, that's definitely yeah. pine tar. I like, know now. You would know if it was like fucking cedar tar for sure, but that's sure? pine tar, man. That's definitely from a hardwood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's good that we got a wood expert. So, yeah. Happy birthday, Godzilla. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Godzilla. Godzilla. Hey, you got Happy some off the dome birthday. facts, don't you? Go fuck the whale. You got some off the dome facts, don't you? Always got to take some a sip of something. Sip of piss. You got some additional bonus facts that you wrote on a napkin burrito. I told them to you already. It was all in number one, okay. basically. Oh. I just wish it all in there. Happy birthday, Godzilla. We should report it on it on his 69th birthday. 66 is dumb. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're Sorry. jumping the gun. Let's this just is say. Just a practice round. No, okay, so, no, his real last birthday was three years prior. That's because he was just chilling out in the middle of the ocean for three years. <laughs> Ocean's <laughs> big, man. A little back. No, maybe little back. he did go to Thailand, right? But he didn't become Godzilla oh, yeah. until he started stomping on Japan. <laughs> it's like right? God's vagina. Nah, man, he went to Bangkok. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, what makes shit. him Godzilla? Is it the radiation? Is Dude, it his... he just told you all the yeah. facts. We just heard some it, fun it, facts. Well, the, the, no, 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 like, like in y'all's mind. It's Dude, the radiation. It's, it's, the radi- it's, the radiation. It's, all the, it's all the lights in your, in your area, his, man. It's <laughs> you got too many like, lights going on. Yeah. Essence. <laughs> the lights are fucking Brino you up. explained Godzilla as being a monster in great detail. I know, but what makes him a monster? Great good quality. In your mind, what makes him a monster? In your mind. I know things is this a about fucking things. Oh, wait, if I didn't know what Godzilla looked like. Is that what you're trying to ask, Gemini? No, yeah, that's like, like, what are Godzilla. his defining features? Or? Yeah. Well, yeah. What is his essence? Do you want me to say T-Rex? Blue, I'll say dude. T-Rex. What do you want to hear, I man? Wanna, I'm just wanna, I just want to know what you feel about Godzilla, man. Like, on He's a deep, cool. fundamental like a level. giant dinosaur. Guy. Yeah. And how big is his dick? <laughs> fucking you. <laughs> I've come to the conclusion he doesn't have one. He has a cloaca. <gasps> We've of course he has no, his yeah. dick. It comes out, It just right? goes oh, yeah. in. It comes out? Yes, yeah, you have to have a, a dick. It's like a prehensile. <laughs> it's a prehensile <laughs> penis. It goes out and then they're like, Ugh. It's, it's the another tail. Shit. Does it's it have like tail. a... It got oh, a hook man. on it. Hook. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. It's barbed. Yeah. It's barbed. It's like a duck <laughs> penis. It's spiral yeah, and barbed, dude. man. Oh my god, Those yeah. are, that's crazy shit. It's lethal and it's radioactive. It is. Stay away. Foxtrot and his new tools. Foxtrot. Oh man, it's been a hassle. Hit that news button, we got yeah, some breaking yeah. fucking news. So I have been updating my tool set again. And Home Depot got like hella deals, right? So Damn. I bought... Hell of shit. Damn. But. And that shit went on sale. So I had to return shit. <laughs> and then buy shit again. <laughs> right? That's not we got it, the man. circular that's scam, not, baby. That's not it. There's oh, that's hacks, not right? it? There's hacks to these They're things, right? So, hacks, Tell huh? me about these hacks. Tell me about these hacks. I'm into this. You could get two batteries and a charger, four amp batteries, bigger batteries, right? Yeah. For $200, then you can buy a tool. Or you get a free tool, right? Uh-huh. Nice. And it's like uh, the better line of whatever Ooh. it is. Right. Yeah. So if you get that and the tool, they ring it up separately. 
Uh-huh. Right? So you can return the Jesus battery. Jesus Christ. And that more expensive tool for like a discounted price. Wow. So I did a bunch of that shit, right? Oh, Jesus. I think you're like admitting to fraud. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is playing the system. No, because I'm returning all that shit because I'm switching systems ah. because it was way too expensive to do it that way versus what I got versus right. buying this one other deal they had. I got you. I it was, got you. It was red. Uh-huh. Which I wanted to switch all my shit to, right? Yeah, you have to match. Yeah, it I want like shit right? when you don't match. I finally have like a really nice set, same tools and shit. Uh-huh. But it was getting too expensive. I was like, dude, this is getting ridiculous. The batteries, the tools that I wanted, I would have to get like individually, you know? Yeah, that's where it's really expensive is piecemealing. Yeah, it. because I, I wanted to piece like my own like custom uh, brand. Set. We got the Foxtrot Hardware Shop. But then I finally was like, you know what? I gotta go to Black and Yellow. Black, black and, and yellow, yellow. Black and yellow. Black so and you yellow. switched all of, all of to black deals, and yellow. Man. Hey, they hey. got the deals before it's even out. I even asked them to get it for me. They had to find what? it. What? It was in it was the like, back? Oh, but somewhere. But you checked man, on the I fucking online? Box, so, like, you checked online yeah, to make sure it was in stock? <laughs> and you're like, no, the app says it's in stock, so you got to go your fucking ass <laughs> back there, bitch. Is that what you said to him, man? Dude, he just wants to go behind the beaded curtain. Jesus. Yeah, basically, man. So <laughs> I've been like <laughs> locally and out of state since I've been traveling too. Sure, yeah. For the past like two weeks. <laughs> man, you've just been flipping tools. It's been ridiculous. You buy a tool you use it, you return it. You buy a tool you use it, you return it for a better one. I got the vacuum right. Uh-huh. And I used it. Yeah. I fucking used it. Yeah. And then I used the batteries too and that then, I had to return. Yeah. I used it. I tested it. Well, at least even, the next use- customer knows that that specific one works. <laughs> and then <laughs> that I specific it. one it, though, comes with free could. leaves and shit. I cleaned it as best as I could. Free fucking leaves. Free leaves. Yeah, free pollen. That's good for bees. It's ridiculous, Save the bees, man. bees, man. Yeah. So Save I've just the been bees going and the seeds. Like every fucking day, returning and buying shit, flipping shit. <laughs> trying buying to get shit, like the best shit. fucking this deal ever. This is called the Home Depot Hustle. The I Home did. Depot Hustle. I have it right behind me. I just got this shit. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. So I got I got four tools, right? Yeah. For four hundred bucks, but then I got two other tools and like a shitload of batteries now. No, only two batteries. I have to buy more of the tools though that I needed. There you go. Those batteries are expensive. For those batteries are expensive. They're like eighty bucks each, right? Fucking expensive, man. (laughs) They're so expensive. But I mean, they power your dildo for like ever. Once you have them, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that was my story. You just got power tools? Oh, You're no, I bought another tools. box. I went red. Another tool box? Yeah. Went red for boxes, black and yellow for the it tools. Was on, it was on sale, man. Really good. That's a nice combo. I'm just using these boxes from my garage now. It's the easiest way. I'm always like, going somewhere to fix shit. So, uh-huh. But yeah, that's it, man. That's all I got. Before uh, Art and the burrito arrived on the pod... Fox Shaw was going to tell me what his week was all about. I was? Yeah, dude. And then, Shit, like, man. you're what like, you no, I got to save it for the show. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. But I forgot. That was, I like, know you did. An hour ago. That wasn't an hour ago. <laughs> I guess maybe it was. But you actually. need to know, man. Give me some uh, questions. No, you. I don't know. Give, give we stopped the conversation give, give so you questions. wouldn't blow your load. Man, I, I guess it's in storage now because I, I forgot. Loads in storage. Dude. I forgot. All right, right. how about your, to your tool collection? Yeah, why don't you tell us about oh, your tool collection? Oh, I'm still trying to return stuff. <laughs> Isn't that time always time a story? <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, right now it is, right now it is. But I'm, I'm getting rid of all this shit, so. That's good, man. How does yeah. that work out? Do you go to different locations and just, no. It's got the same one, man. I know them. It's just but the I, I, that? I was yeah. going to different locations because different stores have different, like a little Inventory. bit different things yeah. sometimes. So, just to see what, you know. I checked Shop. the clearance. Oh shit. Shit, man. Well, most and of the stuff in clearance shit. is like stuff people brought back and so it's right, in it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's used Oh, vacuum. here's one. Here's one. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to do when I brought back the vacuum. Yeah, I was you're like, look you know for what? The one you it's probably going to be on clearance. Yeah. So I'll just check back at that location mm-hmm. for a little bit and see how much more There's an unethical is. life pro tip. Hey, you guys want 5% off? Return the merchandise and then get the same exact one <laughs> from the bin, <laughs> the discount <laughs> bin. <laughs> That's your life pro tip right there. Hey, man. It sounds bad, you know, in these type of times bad, in 2020. Customer satisfaction guaranteed. That's, guaranteed. That's what I'm saying, man. 
And then like 90 own, days later, when that one coupon. that you Oh, exactly. actually, okay, I have one. You make actually, your own I have coupon one. Code. Oh, you do? So I actually tried to exchange one of the deals I got, right? Just to exchange, not to rip anything off. It was the same price for the other tool, right? The same lady, the same lady I've talked to is like such a bitch to me. She flagged so, you. She flagged you in the system. I think she did. I think she did. But it's just funny because like she I told her, I was like, it's the, same, back. it's the same price. There's no way. I got the like highest item you know you could get for a free tool. But this is your 14th visit in three months. No, no. This is the only my uh, like second. <laughs> no, it was my third actually. Did it you was get my third. Sir'd? But everything else was just straight up just returns. You got like, I was just returning. Mind. Yeah, oh, she, like, she was like a bitch, man. She like she didn't want to help out at all, and like I her mean, manager well, was and, there, and, and like just, ultimately, like, like looking at this way, shit. you still spent several hundred dollars. Like, I spent more than several. Yeah, I'm saying like, do you know who I am? <clears throat> I no, I, I, I want to talk to Mr. Depot. <laughs> Look, I'm good friends with Low. Okay. Lowe's? Low. I don't, don't like let me call Low as much, man. Don't make me call Low. I know, like this is his place. I don't like Lowe's as much, man. You don't? I like it better. What if it's the same it's like place? Target, okay. just different Man. labels. It's like Target versus okay. Walmart I just, to me. Maybe it's like the deal. Right? Like I'm just like they're not as good. Yeah, yeah. Lowe's it's is like it's the Target. target. It oh, is man. a Target of tool stores for sure. 100. Uh, yeah. I agree. It's Target. Well, I don't like the, I don't like the tool selection. Like they carry some guy. of the better tools. I get it, man. I get it. You're a Target guy. I don't buy tools from. No, no, no. But you know they actually do have tools that aren't too bad. Cobalt. Let's not worry about them as a tool store. Let's worry about the I'm talking about from a store. quality experience. Oh, merchandise like, store quality? Yeah. Yeah. Shit. I got that's, that's, that's a lifetime that's Depot, warranty. Dude. That's Home, yeah. Home Depot, Depot, man. That's Home Depot. Is it? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. a Home Depot brand. Damn. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I think you can get that at Walmart. Oh, the Lowe's is Cobalt. Yeah, Lowe's is baby. Cobalt. But their shit's pretty good. I got some of their shit, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah Cobalt's pretty good. So what are you returning and why? Just returning a lot of fucking batteries I bought. Because oh. they're all used up. They're incompatible. <laughs> <laughs> no. He no, used all the electricity that was in there for the factory, and now he's taking them back to get new ones. Oh, bitch. He's just no. going to keep using factory electricity. You got to save money where you can. <laughs> <laughs> Use somebody else's electricity. No, no I, I never opened it. You little sexy ass I was just trying to get these things before it was all done, because there's like limited quantities for right. things. Yeah. Because I was just like, I'm just going to return it if I don't need it or I don't like it. Yeah. And then like, they're like, whatever. I guess. And then they're up your ass about it. It's like, listen, bitch. Nah. You know who I am. Whatever. You know, she had a bad day. I wasn't trying I'm to make with it low. Yeah, but it also low. didn't make sense. So like, she was trying to like give me credit, right? So I could buy the tool I want. But the deal is, I get two free tools. Ah. Uh-huh. You know. So I was just like, why can't you just return this whole transaction? Yeah. Let me buy it again. Yeah. And then just ring up this one for that one because she don't like, want to. No, no I tell can't me how do to do my job. Sir. I can't do that, sir. Sir. <laughs> maybe. Oh, yeah. That. Maybe she thought that, man. But you That's know what? That's what she was thinking. Well, you know what? She should have done it. Man. You got you, you're flagged. Because that's her policy, man. You're flagged. It, you're it, flagged it, in her heart. That's okay. You're flagged. There's plenty of home That's why you don't me. go to that location anymore. Yeah, that one's burned, man. You're done, man. We burned no, it. We burned it. We burned it. There's other locations you can go to. No, I went there today. It's all good. You're just going. Rebecca wasn't working there. You already spent that one, man. Rebecca's I don't care. Not working there There's today. different people that work there. Exactly. Go and fucking Lowe's going. It's just one lady, dude. Hey, uh, Everyone did, else is like super nice. Did anybody they actually try to help? Watch any more of the boys? Dynamite! Dynamite! Follow up. Tell me about these power tools, Foxtrot. Oh, man. I, re- I almost did all my returns, man. You did them all? What did but then I was, still, I was still looking for a certain tool for some auto work. Some impact? What some you impact working on? shape? A tool with oh, some man. actual impact is what he's looking for. A tool with some actual impact. Yeah, man. Look at this thing. It's called a stubby. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing. Why do they call that a stubby? A it's so stubby, small. man. Oh, it's so God, small, man. but it's wow. fucking is nice. Wait, That's like, to get the to hard like to reach tiny. places. Yeah, hard to reach the places. The battery's yeah. like slim, right? Yeah, I'm this one's like slim. It. It's pretty small. The other I'm one. Oh, way. Yeah, oh, this that way. Dude, this is like probably four pounds. Wow, oh, so you nice. could keister it and keep it in like kegels. No, because my old one is <laughs> with the battery is like six pounds. Jesus. Yeah. The, and that's not even a, that's what you cut like, your teeth a wrench. On? Well, yeah, this is an actual wrench, though. That's what you started with? You started got with an a anvil. one? Oh, damn, it's got an anvil? Yeah, so it's more for just auto shit. Wow. But yeah, I'm still trying to get those deals and shit, man. Yeah, man. The uh, Home Depot... 
bait and switch mastermind. No, no, no. no that's so Home Depot I don't, hustle. I don't know Home who Depot Home Depot, Depot is. The oh, Home shit. Depot hustler. The Home Depot. I think that's hustler. on Earth, man. Voice, I'm in the, the SC. The Home Depot the SCS, hustler. Man. For voice of reason, Fox Trot. He's no, like I don't know what you're talking on my about. Shoulder I have never heard of Home Depot cook. ever. You've never heard never, or no. seen or been to a Home Depot, alleged Home Depot. They don't have those. He's such a little sexy ass Where I'm from. from. At the slammiest world Mr. In the universe. Depot. Yeah, they don't have that from where you're from. No, nah, man. I ain't got no home. Shit. Jesus. Dynamite! Dynamite! What is this power tool hustle? Man, I ain't got no more hustles, man. You got it all sorted out? I got it all sorted out. Dang. I'm good. Damn, but- yeah. So Jennifer at Home Depot no longer has to see you for a couple months. Huh, How many CIA lists are you now on? Shit, man. None. Because <laughs> I do it legit. legit. And I'm very nice. <laughs> the paper trail's legit. But I got all the shit I, I needed to get. Nice, so. man. What was the last little piece you were looking for? Well, the last, last one. I'm not going to get, I don't think, till I need it. It's that, uh, that mid-torque uh, right. wrench. Yeah. But I'm just going to wait till I need it. You, you got know. the high-torque wrench, though, right? Nah, dude, I don't need thousand plus foot pounds of fucking torque I feel like busting you do, technology. Though. I feel like you do. Because that means... <laughs> I think that goes in a bug out bag. Yes. I could actually, it, <laughs> it could be very useful, actually. No, your baby impact would actually be pretty cool in the bug yeah, out bag. Yeah, that thing is small. But uh, I'm thinking hand tools in that bug out bag. Yeah, Leatherman or something. Leatherman. Yeah. Skeletal. Because, I mean, if you guys were to do one, like, like I have my, I live here, you mm-hmm. know, but mm-hmm. I have one like when I'm outside. Of- you have them buried in different places? <laughs> no, I just have different bags that I take. I see. So it's yeah. like if I'm going to uh, Slam City South, I take out this bag. Yeah, man. You take because the one it when you're in the outfit. Jesus. Shit. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that makes sense. You got to uh, be protected, man. But I thought you were going to tell me that you had your bug out bags like hidden in each state. <laughs> No, you no, have a I'm bug out bag crazy. in each state. So actually, no, you have man. a bug out bag, and that is to never be more than 150 yards from a bug out bag. Exactly. So you never them, know when you're going to need some buried in different <laughs> locations. Yeah. All right. That was the power tool hustle. We've resolved the power tool hustle. Everything is right in the world. Next oh, wait, wait, wait. I do have to add something. Oh, no, actually. we're not done yet. But wait, I'm, I'm currently more. trying to figure out storage, though storage systems. I'm not satisfied with just what the I red had. bags. No, no, I like those too. But I'm talking about like for Permanent. the sockets. Like I wanted it to be way more organized than just throwing it in a bag. Oh, for and sure. Shit that like doesn't like fucking fly off. You know what I mean? You're looking at those EVA foam custom cutouts. Yeah. That's oh what I'm my looking god, into. this motherfucker. But Damn, but. But that's just be lot. fancy and shit. Yeah. That's be fancy. It's not necessary, but, but it is super cool. It makes it a lot easier, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's like, hey, put it right there. Motherfucker's got an exactly. exact spot. What's it's got to be right you? there. That's all I got, man. Nice. And this is the news. Man jailed for life over $20 marijuana sale has been freed. A Louisiana man who was arrested and sentenced to life for selling 20 bucks in marijuana to undercover feds when he was a homeless man is now free. How do you imagine that sting operation went down, dude? For the $20? Yeah, like the cops were just like, hey man, you got some weed to a hobo? It was back in 2008. 2008. And And they just creeped up on this guy, like asked him if he had some weed, and then now he's got a life prison sentence? Did he have priors? He must have had priors, but... Yeah. Like, did he kill people priors? That kind of thing. Doesn't specify in the story, but they did say he was a repeat offender. Yeah. But to get life in prison, you got to be, like, moving some serious weight. You can't just be, like, 20 bucks, and that's the last straw. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Feels a little heavy. But the news does skew it, you know? Yeah, they the, make it sound like he was yeah. jailed for life for just a twenty dollars sure. yeah, sale. I know. I know. Yeah, there's other layers, but I feel like life imprisonment that's got to be moving a ton of weight or super violent offenders, and even some violent offenders don't even get life in prison. You know what I mean? And that's how it yeah. goes. Dark web drug trafficker used fifty thousand dollars to pay his mortgage. And that's how get- officials said Aaron Brewer's customers typically use Bitcoin to pay him. Man, they they outed his name and everything in the headline. 
Yeah. Bitcoin to pay a drug dealer on the uh, dark web, and then he just used fifty thousand dollars in cash to pay for his mortgage. You didn't think he had to watch that at all, huh? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't specify if he was just doing his monthly mortgage payments in the headline. Oh, I see what but you're let's saying. Let's take a look. I see what you're saying. I felt like it was kind of a down payment towards a house or something in one lump sum. But it could probably be you're right. Like over two or three years or monitoring him, he was using the Bitcoin to pay for his mortgage. That's more realistic. It does sound like a sting oh, in good. the sense that he was just you know moving his Bitcoin around to get some cash and then paying for his mortgage. Right. Uh, let's see. Authorities said Brewer later admitted to dealing more than 4,000 grams of cocaine and more than 80 grams of black tar heroin Whoa. over an 11th month period. Okay, so 11... It's a quick way to get to 50K. Yeah. Wait, you said 4,000 grams of cocaine mm -hmm. and 80 grams of black tar heroin? Over 11 months. Man, yeah. I don't, I don't know the street prices, but I feel like 80 grams of black tar heroin is a lot. 4,000 grams of cocaine. I, was that 20 bucks that each? Up. I guess. I don't know street prices these days, but that's yeah. probably what it says in a Netflix documentary. Yeah, or like that's what the cops label it as. Probably $25 per gram. He had one of those websites that was like uh, Silk Road. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, kind of like the eBay for drugs. Yeah. <laughs> but wait, he was – so he was just profiting off of other people selling drugs or he was the one providing the drugs? Because like the Silk Road was kind of just the conduit. You know, it was a forum that all the people who wanted – you know, it was Craigslist. Oh, he wasn't Silk Road. He was just a, a he was seller just a on seller. that of – Okay, I see. He was an Etsy. <laughs> he was a seller. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, an independent business on Etsy. Now the part that I'm wondering about this is how do uh, they how do they catch this guy? I mean, is there just the uh, authorities are up in this it's market probably just tax kind of returns, track of this guy? Tax returns is probably the easiest way, or maybe they're just watching him, his movements. But I feel like tax returns once they try to rectify all that stuff, it's like, wait, hold on, you paid your mortgage is eighteen thousand dollars this year, and you you made twenty five thousand dollars working at Walmart. How are you paying that mortgage? The tracks, yeah. man. The tracks. The paper trail. But the Bitcoin, man, I thought it was anonymous. It is anonymous until you get to like the end user. Then he's got to put that cash somewhere. And it's probably like money laundering. And then they came up to him and said, hey, where'd this money come from? He's like, oh, it's my, it's my Bitcoin. Boom, Bitcoin. Yeah, and also those markets. I mean, you're tying a bank account to it, right? Ultimately, yeah. yeah. In, in order to get your money out. How else are you going to do it? You can piece it out and try to buy stuff with Bitcoin, or you can link a bank account, and then that's how they'll get you. I mean, this guy is moving thousands of dollars over months. It kind of shows up somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Nature is not healing. The pandemic didn't really make a big dent in pollution, apparently. What'd that mean? So I was reading this story, and remember when the uh, pandemic first hit and everybody was in quarantine? Oh, and all they the were like, oh, China's locked down. Since they haven't been doing all this manufacturing and all this nitrogen oxide, or whatever it's called, dioxide, yeah. right. is, is really going away and healing itself. Yeah. Well, on the flip side, because everybody was staying home, getting everything delivered to them, uh -huh. those diesel delivery trucks been running, running more than ever. So – on the flip side, there's been a bunch of yeah. The supply chain had to generate. Yeah, for sure. There was an offset in that there wasn't, I guess, much manufacturing, but the stay-at-home economy kind of flipped itself around, mm -hmm. so that things had to come to us more frequently than we had to go to things. Yeah, twelve-year-old DJ who recognized rave parties in school, Lou, comes home to find his equipment confiscated. Wait, they took his equipment? Haters. He's on school property. Haters. And this has got to be British because it called it a Lou. Lou. Yeah. I looked into this story a little bit because it was funny to me. Apparently, he just like texted all his friends at school to meet up in the bathroom and he was throwing these <laughs> parties and he was serving punch <laughs> and candy and stuff. He had a whole <laughs> little rave scene going, man, in the bathroom. That makes That's me wonder funny. how big this fucking bathroom is and how many kids were in this school, you know? They're eighth grade, so you would assume there's at least, you know, it would be sus if the entire class just left <laughs> yeah yeah there's definitely a rat amongst them oh yeah for sure or maybe they left a mess of candy wrappers <laughs> they just and left their wrappers cans everywhere. <laughs> empty coke cans and candy wrappers that's how you get self-caught that's the paper trail they're talking about with that bitcoin but why'd they take away his dj equipment i'm sure it was like a punishment type thing at home 
hey, you're grounded from your DJ gear. <laughs> oh, but it was confiscated. So it's like the school took it. Yeah. It's probably the school took it. They probably removed it from the bathroom. <laughs> and they said, hey, <laughs> you can't do this. Well, it says comes home to find his equipment confiscated. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't read that far. The, actually, the article was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet when that kid got his uh, equipment confiscated, it felt like a kick in the balls. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Kung Fu masters in China who practice the painful-looking dying tradition known as Iron Crotch. Why is this a dying tradition? Is it because these dudes can't make more babies? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> you use your fucking ball sack as a punching bag and end up not having kids. Is yeah, it what it sounds great. like? This is great for radio, but yeah, there was a video with it. And it's one of those devices where there's like a log oh. on, a, on a swivel or, you know, it kind of swings back and forth. Uh -huh. At the end of the log is like the steel plate and it just like pulls back and goes straight for the junk. Damn, dude. And these guys just practice getting hit there. Why do they practice this? Is it to achieve nirvana? Is it to transcend his pain? I don't know, man. Like martial arts, there's all different kinds of death grips and weird practices of sorts. Yeah, maybe there's one a, there's one clan that is specifically known as like dick punchers. You know what I mean? Back in the day, <laughs> they're like, oh, the there fucking Nakamura clan. They always punch for the dick, dude. We got to get better at that because every time we show up, they just punch us in the dick. We got to go home crying. We can't be doing that. So they fucking develop this routine. <laughs> just probably iron years, crotch. Man. The iron crotch. Women find Chrome Z under Las Vegas bench. Women find Chrome Z under North Las Vegas bench. Win $10,000 in nationwide treasure hunt. So some poker guy left this Z underneath the bench. Yeah, and he uh, published a book that was some sort of like treasure hunt book that had like clues and ciphers. And, you know, you'd have to decipher the code that gives you the clue to find this thing and it was That's just one of those fun. little silver z things that you go and get at like auto zone you know yeah. to like write words on your car and it looks like it it's in the font that your like car's model is or you whatever think it was from a 350z maybe but nah it looked like one of those generic letters that they sell at auto zone i see but she got 10 grand out of it nice Good for man. her go for her so she was actually following the treasure hunt clues or did she just stumble upon this well it was actually her friend that found the Z for her. So no, she probably she didn't leave in Las Vegas. She the clue and she was like, oh, I got a friend in Vegas that could go check this out. So her friend uh, looked around with the, using the clue and found this Z and nice. reported it to the guy and got there. And supposedly there's uh, three more clues and oh, each dip. worth $10,000 a place. We going fucking treasure hunting? I don't know, man. You These things are any, hard. You think any of the uh, the clues lead to the Beta Curtain District? Because that'd be real convenient for me. Probably. <laughs> Sony yanks Cyberpunk 2077 from PlayStation Store after Outcry. In our previous episode, we reported that it was kind of a flop amongst the uh, older gaming systems, but yeah. this story is saying that it affects the newer gaming systems as well. Oof. And they got to fix this shit before they get back on the store, man. Apparently that game's super buggy. I haven't played it at all, though. I'm sure it's disappointing enough to where it was going on for years, right? Like this yeah, game's been under development for years. Yeah, they were de developing it for a while, and everybody was super hyped about it because everybody likes their work. And Keanu Reeves was involved. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, with like game development... There's a lot of money poured into it because does oh, yeah. the gaming industry make more money than the movie industry? I wouldn't doubt it. It makes sense. I mean, and so with like the cyberpunk title, it's been all hyped up. And then the, uh, there was one statistic in the story where whenever it first launched, what, what's that? Uh, CD uh, Projekt Steam. Red. Steam. Yeah, Steam was reporting that there was like a million concurrent users when it first came out. Jeez, man. So but that's I mean, just about, one game. Yeah, you know. And that's the thing about testing this shit on that scale. You can't until you get into the real world and then you have a million people hitting your shit at the same time, finding all kinds of shit. Because, you know, people get bored and just go looking for shit. Yeah. And I can imagine how difficult it is to make an open world game that has all those customizations, yeah. and, you know, endless possibilities. You're bound to have a bunch of glitches in that game. For and, sure. You know, it's unfortunate. But fortunately, they, hopefully they can flip it around. And, I'm sure they'll you know, be fine. Just, let it coexist. Yeah. In other gaming news, 
KFC launches 4K 240 frames per second gaming console with built-in chicken warmer. And I am excited as fuck, dude. I want to try to get my hands on one of these. Yeah, dude. I love this shit. Tell me about it. So they launched the, the renders and stuff. I think it was in April. It felt like an April Fool's thing. And people were like, what's going on? Because they actually brought it back. And they're like, yeah, we're actually going to do this. But they don't have a street price on it yet. But it's supposed to have ray tracing. So it has an NVIDIA chipset and a fairly recent one. You know, it's a, just it a small like four-factor. Yeah, it's just a small four-factor gaming PC. Oh, it looked like an air fryer. Yeah, with an air fryer bolted on top of it. <laughs> so when they say gaming consoles, they're just playing PC games? Or yeah, it's a PC. Does it have its own line of titles for they its own ha- format? KFC has their own game on Steam. It's a oh, dating yeah? simulator. What kind of game is this? A dating simulator? Yeah, where you get to date your own ideal colonel. Okay. Yeah. Is his name Mario Lopez? <laughs> I know, right? If you could, like, that makes so much sense to me that he would be playing, like, a sexy Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Mario I mean, Lopez. I can't think of a better candidate. I can't either. Not even <laughs> Zach Morris himself would be a sexier Colonel Sanders than Mario Lopez. Did Mario <laughs> Lopez ultimately win that battle? I'm sure they didn't compete. You don't think so? Zach versus Slater? You don't think so? Man. I mean, if they were going for the Colonel, Zach probably would have won it. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about, like, Hollywood careers. Who won? Zach or oh, Slater? Mario Lopez, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Because he was on that, what is that, E! Entertainment e? show or something like that. And I mean, if you're getting into something like that, that you know has like millions of viewers and, and it's, it's been going on for years. Yeah, and it's just cyclical. You have It's a job. It's a day job in Hollywood, which nobody has, you know? And it probably pays yeah. pretty well. Mm-hmm. And the dimples? And the dimples. <laughs> Couple win cash equivalent of 60 years worth of Domino's pizza after naming son Dominic. The couple scooped the prize just hours after the competition launched. <laughs> they off, jumped on that shit. Dominic's too common of a name. Why yeah. do they deserve to like win? I don't know. I would actually name a kid Domino versus Dominic. Yeah, didn't we have a related story? This was the, they announced episode? this, but then they announced that there was a winner. This is a follow-up story to that uh, previous story where they would give you 60 years worth of pizza. But I think they just kind of a check for like 10 grand. <laughs> <laughs> is that how much 60 years worth of pizza is equivalent to? Well, you do like Finding 5 99 once a day for 60 years. But they named him Dominic. I know. I know. It's disappointing. No, it's probably not. They probably didn't do that. What do you think they did once a week? I think they gave them probably like a coupon code. <laughs> no, that they, only works they, with no, their... it's a, it's a, what oh, it cash say? equivalent. Yeah, cash equivalent. Well, if we were going with like burrito dollars, our it's, buddy burrito, it's Domino's, <laughs> so five ninety nine. And yeah, you do that whatever. once a week. You think that's yeah. what they did? All right, three thousand eighteen six. Eighteen thousand six hundred eighty eight. There you go. There you go. Same number I was thinking of. Exactly. Pepsi is launching Coca Cola. A drink made to taste like hot chocolate with marshmallows. The drink is described as a delicious blend of cocoa with a hint of marshmallow mixed in. Do you think they just put marshmallow in cocoa and made it a drink? Come on, man. What's going on here? Why is this news? I think they want, they wanted to play on the, the sound of that beverage, Coca-Cola. What beverage is that? Coca-Cola. Oh. <laughs> because people are going to get a few confused. They're going to grab this and they're going to be like, oh, what the fuck is this? Pfft. I want a Coca Cola. <laughs> cola mixed with cocoa and marshmallows. Yeah. Which sounds like a Who bad wants combination. Yoo-hoo? Who wants you who when you want Coca Cola? You know what I mean? I won't knock it till I tried it, but. It's not it something you're going to drink all the pleasant. fucking time, man. And I mean, is it carbonated? Carbonated cocoa. <laughs> Probably not. It doesn't sound good. Yeah. And now we got a trifecta of back to back McDonald's stories. Oh, shit. We're going down the McDonald's rabbit hole. Yeah, it almost has to be like a staple for every news segment. Pretty much is the that least one McDonald's story. McDonald's to serve spam and Oreo burger in China. Mmm, gelatinous canned meat and chocolate cookies. Um, so first we we're talking about Coca Cola. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't sound good. And then there's spam and Oreo. Chocolate spam. I'm gonna have to pass. And maybe it's for that Chinese taste, you know, like China yeah. likes that. Yeah, maybe it or tastes maybe like it became squid, a trend over there. You know, like squidding. Maybe. I don't know, man. 
I'm going to have to pass, though. Yeah, and again, it could be a marketing ploy. Sure. Woman pays for strangers at McDonald's but regrets it after finding out the price. <laughs> so you know that pay it for, do a good thing for yeah. your neighbor kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Little Miss Social Media over here was you know trying to flex on her TikTok. Uh-huh. And she was like, I guess she was doing this live because, I mean, it posted. She uh, told the uh, drive through cashier, I'm going to go ahead and pay for the person behind me. Do you <laughs> think they, the they drive through like, ladies told them that? Told them what? That she was going to pay for it. And then they just ordered a shitload of food. <laughs> Oh, no, I bet they probably, because like you know, minivan. McDonald's is one of those two window type places. Yeah. So it's like you order, you drive up to the first window, and then you order and drive up to the next window. Yeah. I don't think she's the drive through cashier said anything to the next person, but the next person ended up ordering like 30 something dollars worth of food. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like, I'm sure this person yeah. was just thinking like, oh, it's just going to be, you know, like an $8 meal or something. Right? And Why would you like, assume that? <laughs> You got to be like, if you're going to be flexing on social media, you got to think of the worst case scenario, man. It's making the news. Yeah, also (laughs) it's blowing her up because it's 30 bucks at McDonald's. She made out like a bandit, actually, for that 30 bucks at McDonald's. But, you know, it's also like one of those reaction videos. (laughs) Yeah. Did you watch it? Was she like, oh, fuck. No, nah, there were some like freeze frames, but oh. this is one of those things where it's it like would, this it would is be hilarious. hilarious if like she tried to flex this and then it got declined. <laughs> <laughs> well, something in the story was saying like part of her reaction was like if she asked if they take debit. <laughs> oh no! Oh well, yeah. So maybe she had like yeah, she maybe was, she like, had like a twenty, a 20 spot, bill, and you know? she's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can uh, I can hit up the rest of this on this person behind me. They hit her with that thirty dollar meal. Lady was hungry. I get it, man. I get it. Or she was ordering for her family. It's quick to get to 30 bucks these days. Yeah, for sure. And another McDonald's news. McDonald's is launching Kotz Curry Chicken McNuggets, and they sound delicious. Fuck yeah, I'm into this. I think this is Japan. <laughs> yeah, probably. McDonald's is launching a right. new menu item for 2021. Before 2021 rolls around, fast food chains will soon be able to get hold of Kotz Curry Chicken Nuggets. Well, actually, didn't uh, McDonald's... A little while back, do that their international campaign where they had some of those things that they only serve in other countries show up on our menus. You remember that? That rings a bell. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll do that again and we'll get some Katsu Curry Chicken McNuggets. I'd eat that. That sounds way too deluxe. Sounds too deluxe for McDonald's over here. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There was like a curry sauce on the side that looked a little like gravy. Yeah. And I was like, that's not really like a McDonald's side. Gravy? Well, it could be like the barbecue sauce. You know what I mean? Just the yeah. barbecue sauce, but it's brown sauce. But with the general McDonald's population, I don't think this would be a really good seller. Yeah, no, yeah, you know, not the American population for sure. Go after the yeah. Weeaboos. They should do a crossover with like <laughs> Gwen Stefani. You know, she gets the Katsukuri or something like that. Someone who has a high profile crossover with you know, or they could just do like Mike Shinoda. <laughs> The Shinoda burger. <laughs> the Shinoda meal. The Shinoda meal. Complete with Kotz curry. And in some of the better Slam City news, I always love when this happens. Tractor trailer crash spills 20,000 pounds of cheese balls on the highway. you goddamn right. These are your absolute favorite stories. It's just truck rollover accidents where they just spill <laughs> stuff on the freeway. Why is that? Is it because you, weird ha- things. you think of like... You think of the damage, you're like, who has to clean this shit up? And then it's 20,000 pounds of cheese balls. What do you do? Do you do you sweep them up and put them in a dump truck? Or do you just like let's think about, set them to the wind, feed the wildlife? Let's think about cheese balls. Cheese balls are really light, so this the had to volume. be like millions of cheese balls. <laughs> Let me see if I can find the average weight. Average weight of a cheese ball. 0. 0.025 grams. Is that true? More than that. No, I just pulled a number. All right. So you know those Uts? Um, yeah, tractor, tractor trailer, trailer full, of Uts cheese balls. full of Uts cheese balls. How big is this thing? It says it's, oh, wait, this weighs like a pound, but it is is ten inches tall and then like this wide, and it only weighs a pound. So twenty thousand of those <laughs> <laughs> of like folded. I mean, you can like, you can fit a lot in a tractor trailer. Yeah, but I don't think it was just like spilled in there. It's not like they just hopped it in there. It's prepackaged stuff, and they all just fell everywhere. So again, who has to clean this shit up? 
definitely think a couple things when it comes to this tractor trailer flipping with a bunch of cheese balls on on it. First off, imagine being like the car behind the yeah. tractor trailer when yeah. it flips over. When it and first then seeing starts, all the cheese ball. When it <laughs> yeah. first starts, and you're like, oh no. That'll be shocking, just like the tractor trailer experience. But then knowing that it's full of cheese balls, yeah, and the cheese balls just going everywhere. Now you got to so call your boss. One. I, I'm gonna yeah. be fucking late for work. Why are you late again? You're not even gonna believe me. But there's a whole yep. shitload of cheese balls. You're fucking fired. You hear that? You're fired because you're lying to me. No, I just send them some pics. Yeah, some dick pics. It's a Kodak moment. And then the second thing to think about is like being the cleanup crew on that and yeah, how that's... sick of seeing cheese balls you would be. <laughs> I think they just get leaf blowers and just brush them off to the wilderness and let the animals forage on some cheese balls for the rest of their lives so that the animals can have the true American experience. And then in more food news, this ridiculously expensive Tokyo sandwich was worth every one of the 8,650 yen it cost us. Take out from the expensive so restaurant in the most expensive part of Tokyo hurts the wallet, thrills the taste buds. So this is the most expensive part of Tokyo, and they got the most expensive sandwich to go. And it was 86 bucks. What was in the sandwich? Like It looked like beef. It looked like maybe like Wagyu steak in those oh. rectangular sandwich things that are have the crust cut off. I don't know yeah. what you call those. They're just called sandwiches. <laughs> That's Actually, how they do sandwiches over sandwichi. there. Yeah, so it had expensive steak in it. I was like four pieces of it. I see. 86 bucks. Yeah, that's it. Ridiculously expensive, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody gave you $100, would you buy this thing? No, i just keep the 86 bucks. Oh, that was the news. Food truck fanboys, you haven't lived until you've conquered the crazy one. Intergalactic Boba Runner Booba Gett serves you everything. everything in the crazy one. Infinite calories for a not so infinite price. Not Best spring your appetite because the crazy one has everything. 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 No substitutions. No. Don't give up your much earned cred by asking for no pickles or no onions. Booba won't hold the mayo because it wouldn't be the crazy one if it didn't have everything. everything. Next time you have a craving for clout, double get your feet wet. Find the most badass food truck in the galaxy and order the crazy one from Booba Gett's. I'm Boob Gets, and I gets it. So get it. Alright, right, we got a coin toss. What I have for lunch? Heads or tails, dude? Tails. It is heads. Alright, three clues. Boom Chi. You're going first. Alright, Boom Chi. Top 100. <laughs> <laughs> Marcos. Yes, I did. But I, I, awesome. I, how did I dress it up? What did I do? First, I need to ask. Yeah. First, I need to ask, being Arthur, did you use a coupon? I did. You want to know the awesome. coupon code? I want to guess the coupon. Yeah. Was it $5 off over 20 No. So it was one of those preset ones. Like, yes. Uh, $6.99 mediums. Oh, no, no, no. I feel like this is a common coupon code and like one you can default to if you don't have any other coupon codes that apply. BOGO? Nope. Do you not know this coupon code? Because that might blow your mind, dude. Free cheese bread. Nope. Give me a quick hit on on that coupon code. I did. It's like a default coupon code that you can run to when you don't have any other coupon oh, codes. Half off? No, that would be insane. They have half off coupons. I've used all them the a time? couple times. No, all, not the, all time. the time. That's what I'm saying. All the time. 20 off? I did a little better. 30 off. Not that good. <laughs> 25 off? Yeah. There you go. Still a coupon. You want to know it? Oh, the coupon? Yeah. The code? Yeah. 25 off? No. What is it? Save 25. All right. <laughs> so if 25% is better than they can give you, save 25. I mean, the typical coupon that they have is like 20% off, but we're talking Marco's coupons way too much here. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're trumping them up a little bit. <laughs> so we have to, I'm going to guess uh, what you had from Marco's. Yeah. Can I give your two other clues? Boomchi cups. Boomchi. A little extra than you would do. So you got a deluxe? No. But a, is but that a the cup? Deluxe? Is that the deluxe? I mean, it's what another mean, like, It's another word for deluxe. Supreme? Yeah. But you said cups? Yeah. So you had a Supreme and then you had something that came in cups? No. 
I swapped out uh, the regular pepperoni and put the old word pepperoni. Oh, because that shit comes up and gets the grease. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely the bonus. Yeah, for sure. What's funny you mentioning Marcos though is I had Marcos like I want to say it was earlier this week, uh-huh. and like I woke up with the worst like <laughs> acid reflux, <laughs> damn uh, acid reflux, and I was thinking like man it was those damn cups. <laughs> I didn't say cups to myself, but I was like it's the old world pepperoni that messed me up. Yeah, for sure. Because they're spicier and saltier. Those than, old like, world the pepperonis pepper. are built differently. They sure are. Yeah, it's like they dry them out extra, you know. Yeah. <laughs> really, really condensed the flavor. Any other customizations to your Supreme? No, nah, it had that. It had Italian sausage, onions with green peppers. Mushrooms. Or, uh, mushrooms or pepperonis. Am I mistaken or are those mushrooms like, they can. seem like they come out of a can. can yeah. yeah, for sure. They're slimy, dude. It's like, dude, you need to cook this shit longer so you'd lose that. It's not even, yeah, it's not even about slimy. It's more about like they're, they <laughs> yeah, they're have perfect. so much liquid caught up in it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like perfectly shaped, you know, like all the frills that are usually the Uh gills and stuff are like flattened out in there. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's like, you know, when it's real mushrooms, because they kind of get wrinkly. Yeah. And they have all that fucking texture. Did you dress up the crust? Garlic butter. All right. Yeah. I'm a double, what do they call it? Like Roma, Romajan or something. Oh, shit. Like the Parmesan Romana. They just throw cheese on on it. They just throw cheese on the edge of it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. See? I got to get tips from the Marcos Pro. You should start your Thanks, man. You should start your uh, Marcos Pizza blog. I was Marcos always thinking about tips. Like doing, doing like a couponer's blog kind of thing. You should do it and call it Arthur's.tips. <laughs> <laughs> is dot .tips a domain? Yeah. Or dot .tips. Man, tip. I'm sure it's a bestseller. I'm sure it is. I'm sure that's a gangbusters. And everybody goes directly to it and like just the – Dot tip. Just take oh, already taken. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't Let's want any other. I don't want any other. <laughs> Let's story. try J U S T D A dot tip. Oh, take it, take it. <laughs> it was uh, really, T. Where's the T? J U D A. Just a tip. Take it. Nope. Take it. <laughs> and the only domains that have ever been registered on the dot tip <laughs> domain are variants of just the. <laughs> every yeah. single, every single variant of just the. <laughs> Because it costs 90 bucks a year to renew. <laughs> yeah. So what did I have for lunch? Boom chi. Circle. Oh, God. You also have Marcos? I didn't have Marcos, but I've had this on the show before, or I've given the clues for it. Oh, it's uh, Little Caesars. No. Nah, boom chi, I defrosted it at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Boom chi, it was leftover. <laughs> Damn, you had leftover Red Baron? Heck yeah. Not only did you have Red Baron pizza, <laughs> but you had leftover Red Baron Damn pizza. Straight. Arguably no the worst type of pizza. It's not bad. I wouldn't bad, say it's though. the worst it's type of pizza. Though. Yeah, you're right. It's not that bad. Did you hit I mean, it in your air fryer? The, no, I should have. That's how I had my I Marcos. Needed a, I needed the quick 30 seconds. Yeah, you know? I hear you, man. Sometimes you just got to get in and out, get, grab, go. I'm not going to eat it cold, but I'll just throw some warmth in there through some microwave radiation. Microwave radiation technologies. That's how it goes. And that's what we had for lunch. Was there anything else you wanted to cover in this episode, Gemini Jackson? I've been getting over a cold. I feel like, I don't know, my, my runny nose has been lasting a really long time. <laughs> and like, that's Do you the feel last like you left. got that cold from, from a, a producer? From you? <laughs> from a show Maybe, producer? But I don't know. I don't, I don't know because I did, uh, I did work externally so i was out and about kind of but i had my mask on the entire time but who knows where you get cold from it also could just be like common cold you know it probably is a common cold yeah i think temperature just triggers that yeah the flux of temperature is what triggers it for me where it's like super cold and then gets warm that's how i get sick i hear that i had a crazy dream earlier this week that i can still remember oh, isn't shit. that crazy whenever you have like dreams and then you can just kind of remember it but uh-huh. i'll make it quick was it uh hold I on, had this let, dream. let me guess let me guess was it uh <laughs> was it uh Rebecca not... Romaine Stamos where she Mystique was it Mystique sucking your dick? No oh, man, where did you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird idea. Is that one of your dreams? <laughs> That's like no, because like look, she can be anything, right? Or anybody, yeah. Or anybody, dude. She got that P control, is all I'm saying. P control? <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, really crazy power to have, though. Yeah, for sure. What's your dream about? Nah, my, my dream's like so boring compared to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I had this dream where I was working like kind of just a like an hourly wage job. So I had two jobs, right? Yeah, you have to. And I was and I was working one of the jobs where I was working at some sort of like warehouse where they assembled office furniture. Oh god. And my job was to just put these screws in like an office chair <laughs> the entire time. Oh, so like assembly line. Kind of, but it, it was one of those, probably like the orders come in and then you just got to put them together. Oh, and, I see. And maybe that's just the task I was doing that day. But yeah, my dream was to like screw in these screws on this office chair. And I think it kind of stemmed, you know how like in, when you have dreams, it has something to do with like what happened in reality. Yeah. So yeah, I put together an office chair recently. <laughs> no big deal. I think that's where that piece came from. Yeah. But as for like having this like hourly wage job and I was making 12 bucks an hour. Jesus. And so while I was at this warehouse job, I also had a second job that while I was doing my job, stressing two things. First off, making 12 bucks an hour. Yeah. And then the second thing was I was supposed to also be at my other job at that same time. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> oh, I totally dude. didn't call in. Oh, dude, I've had those dreams. <laughs> and it was just stressful. And I was just working with a bunch of, you know, lower class people that just hated life. So, you know, there's just a bunch of negativity in the air. Yeah, for sure. You can feel it. Just people yeah. like working jobs that they don't like. Yeah. And one of those kind of reality checks when you wake up and life's really not like that. But it is for some people. Yeah. It's hurting for some people. 12 bucks an hour. You got to think about that. You know, how are you paying your rent, which is a thousand bucks? I mean, you're not even getting a thousand bucks every two weeks. No. What's that? Yeah. $960 before taxes max. And you know, they're not giving you 40 hours. That's why you have two jobs. Yeah. Or maybe you're working around the clock, you know, got yeah. that day shift for your 12 bucks an hour. Afterwards, you go run the other job. Uh-huh. The drugs. That's hard living. Wait. Yeah. Selling drugs for Bitcoin on the... uh on the deep Silk web. Road marketplace. Yep. yep. Just being one of them Etsy sellers, an Etsy face in the crowd. So yeah, that was my crazy dream. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have any dreams this week, man. Otherwise, I'd share mine too. Something we should uh, ask the guys when yeah. they come back around. I think so. Hey, what, do you, what do you dream about? <laughs> <laughs> when your hair's all messed up and you look like shit, there's a solution for you. Blow and go. State of the line, solid state technology. Source with the bestest Japanese tidbit technology to create the best hair dryer in the world. Shit, even the universe. Ten levels of blow with two fucking two hyperdrives. It's the apex of the vortex. So tsunami, mommy. You can read up on the advanced features of blow and go in your own time. For now, just blow and go. That's all you need to know. Every major department store that's worth shit. And gas stations. And bodegas got them. Everyone's entitled to the truth. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Slam City Radio. Get in touch with us through our contact form at SlamCityRadio.com. We'll send you a sticker, then ask you to roll a ticket. Subscribe, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. All, all day, day, every day. Scram! I said split. Shake the scene, you took it. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Is that too much? Hit him up!